They're trying to make me go to rehab, but I won't go. <laughs> hey, what's up everyone? Eva here and today I'm going to be showing you guys what type of products and ingredients you should start with if you're having trouble with oily skin like mine. Let's face it, it's not easy trying to pick skincare products. I have oily skin with acne and was a total noob to this whole Korean skincare game a couple of months back. I mean, you get all kinds of recommendations from people on what to work for them and their skin types and I've been there, trust me. And when I say this, I totally understand what it feels like to be lost and end up spending more money than you should be. But that's about to change today, right here, right now. Now to start things off, let's talk. Cleanser. The basic step. The oh no, you cannot miss out on this step. Step. I've had my hands on a couple of cleansers and this is what I found out. Number one is quick results are not always the best. Mm -hmm. Always start slow and start gentle. Avoid products that have natural oils and alcohol. I've instead went for products that are gentle, hydrating, soothing and ones that um, keep my skin barrier intact. And believe me, this is a whole new game. And to keep things clear, you need the sebum on your face. Call it a natural moisturizer, so trying to dry out is Mm, not a really good idea. In fact, it only makes things worse. Now, exfoliators. A common mistake most of us make at the beginning is not exfoliating, excessive exfoliation or using harsh exfoliants which worsens your skin condition in a multiple ways. So, much like a cleansing, start gentle and slowly work your way up. Fun fact about exfoliators is that you can find exfoliating ingredients in cleansers, toners, serums, and also other essences. Now, what to look for when picking an exfoliator? So for this, you can go for ingredients like BHAs, um, which works wonders for oily skin. But a gentle reminder to always start in low percentage and once a week then work your way up, allowing your skin to get used to it so that it doesn't cause any skin damage. Next up, we have toners. Consider this step the bridge between your initial cleansing, exfoliating steps and the following steps that follow after toning. Why? Because basically toners helps prep the skin for essences, moisturizers and a serum to allow for better absorption. But that's not all, is it? No. Toner can also hydrate, exfoliate and also improve your skin's texture. So then, what should you look for in a toner? You can keep a lookout for ingredients like niacinamide and hyaluronic acid to name a few. Moving on to moisturizers. I know, I know, I didn't believe in this either back then, but once I got to know more about my skin, it all started to make sense. So apparently, um, your skin produces more sebum or oil because of two reasons. Wrong type of moisturizer and lack of moisturization. For someone like me with oily skin, I always avoid moisturizers that have essential oils or any type of oils that could potentially clog my pores and yes, I avoid ones that also have added fragrances. Instead, I look for products that have um, hydrating and lightweight ingredients that are also humectants like hyaluronic acid, um, pantanol and niacinamide for starters. And finally, sunscreen. Yup. You heard that right. Sunscreens are vital in contributing to maintaining your oil and hydration levels. So when you skip your sunscreen, it is actually making things worse. So we know for a fact that um, UVA and UVB rays from the sun are harmful. And when it comes to oily skin types, skipping your sunscreen allows those rays to dry out the surface oils and makes the sebaceous glands 
even more active leading to more sebum production. Yep. So that's it for now. If you found the video helpful, leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe for more skincare content. Also let us know in the comments what type of videos you would like to see next. Over and out. Skin bees. And that's a wrap. <laughs>